Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Software engineering at massive scale is what we'll be talking about the next few minutes. My name is Sara Bayman. I am a senior software engineer at Microsoft, where I work as a backend engineer. My journey into tech, I'd like to believe it started when I was 12 years old. When I was 12, Christer Fuglesang became the first Swede in space, and a dream was born. I was going to become an astronaut. The years went by, and eventually my dad told me that, you know, you can't really go to school to become an astronaut. And Christer, the Swede who was in space, he's an engineer. Okay, I'll go be an engineer then. I didn't really know what they did, uh, but I realized I had to study something within STEM to, uh, in high school to become one. So at 15, I, I had to choose my high school program. And it was very hard for me. Even if I narrowed it down to only STEM, I felt like there was an overwhelming amount of choices. Uh, but there was this one program that caught my attention. I think mainly because it had a rumor of being one of the hardest programs. And when I was 15, that mattered a lot to me. Now that I'm twice that age, it doesn't matter at all. But at the time, I don't know, for some reason it felt super important. There was just this one small caveat. This program had around one-third IT classes, and I, I knew next to nothing about computers. I could boot one up, and I could use Word, and I could use the internet browser, but that was about it. I didn't even have a smartphone. But I figured, you know, computers, surely they will be useful to learn about at some point. So, said and done, I applied, and I got in. In my very first computer science class, the teacher, he kept going on and on about the CPU. I had no idea what that was. So eventually I, I had to raise my hand and ask, I'm sorry, but you keep saying the CPU, what is that? And I could feel the eyes of the rest of my class burning my neck. Who is she? What is she doing here? Doesn't she know this super basic thing? The teacher, however, happily explained that the CPU is the central processing unit, and it's essentially like the brain of the computer. Turns out I was not the only one who didn't know, and I'm very glad that I asked the question. So um, even though I had not chosen this program for the computer science, I ended up hooked. I was so excited by this field that I decided I was going to become an engineer in computer science. Uh, said and done, off to university I went, and I had some of the most educational, fun, exhilarating, inspiring, and hard years of my life. During my master thesis, during the, or during my master years, in the fourth year, I did an internship for Microsoft. And I remember telling my amazing mentor about this course I had just taken in parallel computing. And I was so proud, I told her, you know, I distributed a program over 16 computers. And she said, 16? Oh, how cute. Here, you will get to work with thousands of computers. And my mind was completely blown. I was so, so proud of 16, like I couldn't even fathom going to 1,000. But she was right. By the end of the internship, I had distributed software across thousands of machines. Um, I ended up liking it so much that when, once I graduated, I came back full-time to Microsoft. When I look back on my journey, when, when it's drawn out like this, it looks like the road was easy, straightforward, like every step was this perfect setup for the next. It didn't feel like that going through it. It felt more like this. It went up and round and backwards and forwards and around in circles. And there were many moments of doubt, of feeling that I wasn't good enough, of feeling that I didn't know what to do next or that I didn't belong here. And those are hard times, but those are times you learn. And with the support from friends and family and mentors, you find your feet again and uh, you keep going. When, when asked to do this talk and when asked in the past to do things like inspire women to go into tech, I'm often told about that. Say something inspiring. I don't know what's inspiring to you. That's my conclusion. I have no idea what your passions are. But I do know what my passions are and I know what inspires me to go to work every day and, and continue to, to work in this field. So I will tell you about that instead. The first thing is 
being a software engineer is building, means building for an unknown future. Our field is ever evolving. There are constantly disruptive technologies emerging. That means that you're on this path of constant learning, constant rediscovery, constant innovation. And that's really exciting. And just to name a few examples in the last 20 years. Before 2007, before the first iPhone, there was no such thing as an app. And now just think about how many apps you probably integrate in, um, interact with on a daily basis. It's a huge industry with thousands of people working in it, and it didn't even exist before the iPhone was launched. Another example is virtual reality. That started to gain traction around 2016. It sounded completely sci-fi before that. It was something we dreamed about in, in sci-fi books and sci-fi movies. But now it's real. We do everything from gaming to construction work to surgery using this technology. In 2019, 5G was adopted by the first country and has then just continued to spread. And we can now access the internet at mind-boggling speed, which unlocks this great potential for innovation, especially in areas that are not connected to landline uh, internet wires. And last year, we saw the rise of large language models and generative AI, and suddenly everyone was talking about AI all the time. This is so new, we don't even yet know what it will mean to our industry or to any other industry. I'd like to believe that this means we will have more time to do the fun stuff, to do the creative things. The AIs will do the boring things for us, but time will tell. Another thing that matters a lot to me is building what matters. Now, I want to have a positive impact in people's lives. I want to do something that matters uh, for real. And here, it even though I'm working for a few years now, I still think back about my internship mentor and when she said, 16 computers? Oh, cute. Because the reality is, um, when you have massive scale and you apply innovation, the opportunity you have for impact is tremendous. And that's one of the things I like the most about my job, is the scale at which we operate. There are millions and millions of users who interact with the things I build on a daily basis. And that means we need thousands and thousands of servers to operate this. And that's a pretty interesting challenge. Um, oh, now the slide. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Right, here we have um, where I spend the most time, in the people space. I'm sure if you've used a Microsoft product like Teams or Word or PowerPoint or yeah, pretty much any Microsoft product and you've seen your name, you've seen your pronouns, you've seen your photo. Uh, those are the things that I work with. And they are things that should just work. Like if you change your name, you expect that to be visible everywhere. You don't want to like do a bunch of stuff. It should just magically work. But there's a lot of engineering that goes into this just working. It's kind of like flicking a light switch on. The lights just work. You expect it to always come back. You don't think about the marvel of engineering it took to get it there. The power had to be generated somewhere, had to be transmitted potentially across great distances before it ended up in your home through your light switch, through your light bulb. And, and it's the same here. And the thing about people and representation is that how you express yourself matters. It matters in person. You probably think once or twice before you dress yourself for the day. And it also matters online. It matters how others perceive you. Um, so doing this takes a lot of work, but it's very rewarding and it touches a lot of people's lives. Another passion of mine uh, is this. With great power comes great responsibility. Every industry will need to change in the face of climate change. In fact, every industry is already changing. Software is no different. Um, Microsoft has high sustainability targets and other companies in the industry as well. They want to decrease their own emissions and they want to help others to do the same by being a partner on their journey. And there's some really cool experimentations here going on. Microsoft has tested data centers in the ocean, different, different types of cooling mechanisms like liquid cooling or water-based cooling or air-based cooling. Uh, and my personal favorite, green software. This is an area I spend a lot of time 
uh, thinking about, writing about, talking about, working with. Green software being software that use to do more with less resources, less energy, less hardware, less carbon. And one of the absolutely coolest things that already exists here is software that listens to the carbon intensity of your grid and changes its behaviors. We call this carbon-aware software. When I first heard about this, it sounded very sci-fi, like my software would listen to the electricity grid, and if there were more wind power, it would do more. And if there was no wind power, it would do less. But this is the reality. Uh, Windows 11 is doing this for update installs, and Xbox is doing it for game downloads. So something we once just dreamed about is now a reality. So looking back at Sarah, 12 years old, no, I didn't get to go to space, but I am using the skills that I have to make people's life here on Earth a little bit better every day. And that's pretty good to me. Thank you for listening.